Yo, 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 what's going on YouTube? This is Josh coming at you from my office. Um, American AF Dumpsters. Uh, so look, there is so much information out there about DOT numbers, US DOT numbers, CDLs, and all of that. I did a video before. This is going to be my second video on DOT numbers um, and if or if not, you need one uh, operating um, your truck and your dump trailer or your truck plain and simple so I'm not gonna write stuff out for you I'm not gonna sit here and talk I'm gonna literally take you step by step onto the actual websites that um, will give us an answer a definitive answer on whether or not you need a DOT number um, or or not Okay, so there's two types of DOT numbers. Let's get that straight. First of all, there's a US DOT and your individual state's DOT. I do not know your individual state, so I'm not gonna comment on an individual state DOT. Some may have stricter requirements, some may have looser requirements. All I know is TexDOT, Texas DOT, and I'm gonna show you that. Um, again, you have to do your own homework. I'm gonna tell you about US DOT. You have to do your own homework in your own state. Um, there's so much misinformation out there guys do not go by what I or any other youtuber have to say I would do your own homework either way I would talk to your state I would talk to a DOT compliance officer and triple quadruple check dot your I's and cross your T's okay but let's start uh, let's start showing you what I can show you from um, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration's website and then I'm gonna take you over to TxDOT's website okay all right, so I right here am at fmcsa.dot.dot.gov. Okay, do I need a U.S. DOT number? Okay, the U.S. DOT number is your federal DOT number. Understand that, please. It doesn't have to do with your specific state, but your federal DOT number. I and my other business that uh, limousine service, I do have a USD number, U.S. DOT number, and that is because not because of weight. But because we have um, a certain amount of passengers that we carry in our vehicle. So it's 15 or more passengers require a U.S. DOT number. 14 or less does not require a U.S. DOT number. Look, if you want to go out and get your own U.S. DOT number, go for it. It does only cost $25. That's not the big deal. That's the easy part. The hard thing is you are now going to be in a U.S. DOT required. Um, you have to follow all the requirements. And you have to double. You have to make sure everything's, again, you got to make sure everything's correct. So... For us, for a limousine service, I have to have all the drivers go through that are driving US DOT vehicles um, or DOT vehicles have CDLs. They have to have medical cards once a year. I believe it has to be renewed. Not believe it was once a year renewal. They have to pass a physical. They have to take a pre-employment drug test before I hire them. Then I have to enroll them in a random drug test program, a third-party random drug test program uh, that we pay for separate, separately. Then you are in the system to be randomly checked at any and all times by a DOT officer. They can come and call you and they say, well, we're going to be there on Monday. And they check all your paperwork. They check all your, your files. So you got to make sure that your stuff is correct. It's not it's not just $25 and here you go. For the guys that have done so or have their DOT, you're in for a rude awakening when it comes time for your DOT officer to come in and do an audit. Uh, they may take, it depends on how many drivers you got, but they may come in, they may look at your vehicles. They may, um, they may come in and look at your vehicles. They may come in and look at all your files, or your pickup, your drop-offs, how much you charge, your uh, employee files, your, just a lot. There's a lot. Um, so, you know, yes, getting a US DOT number is simple, but if you can avoid it and you don't absolutely have to do it, don't do it. Um, but make sure you're being legal. So, again, check with your state. But here we're going to go, uh, we're going to look at US DOT and we're going to see if we need a US DOT number. Okay, so what is a US DOT number? Companies that oper operate commercial vehicles transporting passengers which is what we do in my limo company, or hauling cargo. So for you guys doing uh, dumps, trailers, that's, that's, that's what your cargo is. In interstate commerce, must be registered with FMCSA and must have a US DOT number. That literally says interstate, okay? There's two types of travel 
It's either interstate, I-N-T-E-R, or intra state, I-N-T-R-A. Interstate means that you're crossing state lines. If you are crossing state lines in your business, because either you're right on the border, you're servicing two different cities, one on one state, one in another, then yes, you need a DOT number, a US DOT number. And you might need both states DOT numbers too. Also, commercial commercial intrastate hazardous materials carriers who haul types and quantities requiring a safety permit must register for a D- US DOT. If you're using or if you're hauling hazardous materials in your own state without crossing state lines, and as long as it falls under the quantities required for a safety permit, then yes, you also need a US DOT number. USDOT serves a unique identifier when collecting and monitoring a company's safety information acquired during audits, compliance reviews, crash investigations, inspections. Speaking of crashes, if you have a USDOT number and you get in an accident, you are required to get a drug test within, I don't know the exact time, within an hour, two hours, three hours of that accident. If you don't, you could be held liable as well. Okay, so make sure that you are following all the proper laws. Again, there's just a lot that's involved when you get a DOT number. That's why I'm not like the other guys where other people are telling you, go get one. It's only $25. No, it's a lot more involved than just $25. You are required to obtain a USD DOT number if you have a vehicle that is used to transport the types and quantities of hazardous materials, hazardous materials requiring a safety permit in inter- intrastate commerce. So again, you need a DOT number, a US DOT number, if you're hauling hazardous materials that requires a safety permit in your state or has a gross vehicle weight rating or gross combination weight rating or gross vehicle or gross combination weight of 10,000 or one pounds or more, whichever is greater. So 10,000 pounds, this is where the 10,000 pounds comes in, okay? Let me highlight this real quick. I don't know how to do a highlighter, but has a gross vehicle weight rating or GCWR, gross combined between the truck and the trailer, or gross vehicle weight or gross combination weight of 10,000 more 10,000 pounds or more. So that's where your 10,000 pounds come in, okay? We're going to talk about this in a second. But it has to be one of these three, okay? And, and is involved in interstate commerce. So... If you're 10,001 pounds or more and you're involved in interstate commerce, if you cross state lines, then yes, you do need a U.S. DOT number or between two. So between us, here we go, interstate between a place in a state and outside of such state, including a place outside of the United States. Okay, so between one state or another between two places in a state through another state. So let's say you your state requires you to drive through Oklahoma to get into another part of Texas. Well, you don't have to, but let's say you do. Then yes, you need a US DOT number. Between two places in a state as part of trade, traffic, or transportation originating or terminating outside the state. So basically, again, if you cross state lines, you need a US DOT number and your vehicle weighs 10,001 pounds or more, okay? Again, people are getting held up right here and they're not reading on that you have to be involved in interstate as well. If you're staying in your own specific state, you do not need a US DOT number. Second part, and none of these. So all three of these only come into play when, okay, when you are involved in interstate commerce, okay? And it's just, there's so much disinformation out there that, you know, it's, it's, it's just right here. It's black and white. Okay. 10,001 pounds or more. Yes, that's, that's a true number, but you also have to be involved in interstate commerce. If you're staying in your own state, you do not need a US DOT number unless you're 26,001 pounds or more. That's a whole nother thing. Either you're hauling hazardous materials or you have 10,001 more pounds or more, and you go from state to state. Now, states that do require a DOT number, now this is actual on top of US DOT, states that, that they have their own regulations on, on DOT numbers. So over here, uh, these are all the states, right? So let's go to Texas. I'm gonna go to text dot. 
Okay. Okay. Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. Motor vehicles. So we already explained. We've already got it pretty clearly here that we do not need a USDOT. Going back. Let's go back real quick. There's also a big yellow box right here that says, do I need a DOT number? Okay. Let's click on that. Are you a motor carrier transporting property or passengers in commerce? Yes. Click on yes. Select one. I am interstate carrier. I am a intrastate carrier. Again, two different types. I do not travel outside of Texas. I cover two counties in my in my state, and that's pretty much it. I don't have to cross state lines to cover one county or the other. Now, if I went to do temporary, even if it's temporary, if I did hurricane relief over in Louisiana, that makes me interstate, not intra. Okay, that changes my classification. I don't do that. So let's click on B. I am an intrastate carrier. Do one or more of the following apply? Yes or no. I carry one or more types of hazardous materials that require a safety permit. I do not. I do not carry any radioactive equipment or materials. I do not carry more than 25 kilograms of material, whatever it is, requiring placarding. Um, I don't have any hazardous materials. I don't carry fuel. I don't carry bulk packages. Again, you can read this all you want. My state of domicile requires me to obtain a US DOT number. This might apply to you. Again, you have to check your own state. I'm going to go into Texas here in a second. But you have to check your own state. My state does not require us to carry a US DOT number unless we are 26,001 pounds or more. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. Okay? So neither one of these apply to me i do not haul hazardous materials natural gas methane content of 85 percent in bulk pack i don't carry any of this stuff and my state does not require it so i'm gonna hit no you do not need a usd dot number but you may obtain one look they're not stopping you from getting one i'm not stopping you from getting one all i'm telling you is you are opening pandora's box if you apply and get a us dot number because once you get one, you're in the government's database of companies that they can randomly audit at any given time. And I guarantee you, no matter how good you are, even if you hire an outside vendor like I do to do my DOT paperwork for my other company, they will find something, okay? There are so many laws that it's an insane to uh, try and follow at all times, okay? I mean, it may not be it may not be anything that'll tarnish your record. You pull up my company's USDOT record. We have a there's only three types of outcomes that can come out of an audit: satisfactory, unsatisfactory, and I believe like a suspended you know suspension type of service, or they put you out of service. Um, so you know we've we've come in satisfactory every time. That doesn't mean that we were a hundred percent. Yes, we got fined one time, and everybody that I know has always been fined because they always find something. Um, so anyways, we're going to move on from there. But my point is, it literally says here you do not need a USDOT number. For everybody that's saying that you absolutely need a USDOT number is 100% incorrect. And I'm sorry, guys. I love you guys. I love um, the other guys that make the videos and stuff like that on YouTube. But um, they're, they're, I don't think they're doing it intentionally. I just think that they're, you know, they're taking you down a deep, dark tunnel that is, is um, you will not realize how serious it is until you um get audited one day it may take i mean we didn't get audited until like six seven years into the business um so you know it may take forever but eventually you will be audited as long as you stay in, if you stay in business okay so click here to process of obtaining a usd dot number again you can get one if you want to go for it i'm not stopping you i'm going over to text dot though now my texas now my state tells me uh if i need a Texas DOT number for dumpsters, okay? Motor carriers operating intrastate. I am only operating in the state. Again, I'm going to tell you that one more time. Commercial motor vehicles on a road or highway in Texas must register their operations with Texas DMV's motor carrier division. For intrastate operations, please ensure you register with the U.S. DOT and intrastate, not intrastate. Okay, so this is telling you if you do end up getting a TexDOT or Texas DOT number, then they do want you to get a U.S. DOT number, okay? Um, and if you are only in intrastate, um, you have to just file it as that. If you are interstate, then that's a whole nother thing, 
okay so you must register with a motor vehicle when you let me highlight this okay when you a or first bullet point operate a commercial vehicle or a combination of vehicles with a gross weight gross weight which is a total weight registered weight or gross weight rating exceeding 26,000 pounds okay so there is no magic 10,000 pound number in Texas it's 26,000 pounds okay transport hazardous materials in a quantity that requires placarding if you need a placard whether it's hazardous materials that you need one of those you know triangle things or whatever that's a placard um, no we don't do that Operate a farm vehicle with a gross weight registered weight or gross weight rating of 48,000 pounds or more. Super hard for me to read that. Sorry. Operate a vehicle designed to transport more than 15 passengers, including a driver. This is where my limo company comes in. Our bigger vehicles have more than 15 passengers. It doesn't matter if at the time you get pulled over, you only had 10 passengers in a 15 passenger vehicle. It's however many passengers the vehicle is rated to carry. Okay. Again, you don't have to worry about that in a dumpster business, but in the limo business, that's different. Bus business, school bus business. Those guys are all CDLs. Those guys are all DOTs. Uh, next one, operate a commercial school bus. Okay. Transport household goods for compensation regardless of vehicle weight. Now, this is a good question. Transport household goods. Okay. This was a question that came in in our um, private Facebook group. Again, if you want to be in part of the private Facebook group, please go to the description below, and I have a link to our private Facebook group. Let's find the definition of household goods. So, in searching what a household goods, uh, the definition of a household goods under TxDOT, um, I can't find anything other than what shows to be, to me, like a moving company. Um, you know, they have how to make a complaint on a moving company, moving tips and the moving checklist, uh, your rights and responsibilities when you move in Texas, consumer protection guide to moving, um, just all about um, moving, okay? Um, if you move someone's goods, household's goods for money, like two men in a truck, things like that then that is my that is what my take on this household goods is again i search right here on texas website household goods and it shows me an application uh the operating authority application uh don't make a move without us just kind of a um re, uh, uh, a guide to um a consumer before they make a move Household goods moving mover training webinar. Okay, household goods consumer protection complaint forms. If you have a complaint, all that stuff. It says here all household goods on the top here, top left, all household goods, motor carriers or move movers. Sorry, I'm trying to highlight this at the same time. Movers operating within Texas are required to have an active certificate of motor vehicle or motor carrier registration and abide by the motor carrier rules and regulations under chapter two one eight of title 43 so this basically shows me that again i need a there's so many things that you would need again to get this dot number uh texas administrative code to form an application number one you need a usd number us dot number so definitely get the us dot first your business trade name your owner name physical address legal agent texas domiciled motor carrier must provide the name telephone number and address of a legal agent um a motor carrier domiciled outside of Texas must provide a name, phone number, and a Texas address of a legal agent for process. Uh, talks about description of vehicles. You need to uh, describe what kind of vehicles you're going to be using. Type of motor carrier. Uh, proposes to transport. Whether you, then you have to choose what type you're going to motor carrier you're going to be. Are you going to uh, transport people, household goods, or hazardous materials? Again, those are the three things that you can transport or that you have to tra under this under this uh, under text dot. Uh, then it goes over insurance coverage, your minimums, safety certifications. Each motor carrier must complete as part of the application a certification stating that the motor carrier knows and will conduct operations in accordance with all federal and state safety regulations. Again, it's not as simple just going and spending $25. Drug testing certifications. <coughs> Each motor carrier must certify as part of the application that the motor carrier is in compliance with the drug testing requirements, which is also random drug testing. If the motor carrier belongs to a consortium, which is a uh, group, of, of, of companies that put all their employees together 
um, to do random drug testing. That way, if you only have two or three um, employees, um, you know, you have to do, I think it's like 33% of your employees have to be drug tested. And then one out of, I forgot what it was, one out of five people have to be uh, randomly uh, uh, alcohol tested throughout the year, every year. Um, if you only had two, then, you know, they're each going to get it. So you put your two employees in a consortium like, uh, oh, what are the big boys' names? Uh, Foley, um, stuff like that. So you can put them in a consortium so that you don't have to, um, they all kind of uh, go together. So not they don't have to be randomly drug tested every single year. You must provide, the applicant must provide the names of the persons operating the consortium. So like Foley or something. During the uh, duration of registration, an applicant must indicate the duration of desired registration. Household goods carriers may not obtain seven or 90 day application or certificates of registration. Just so many things you'd have to go over and double check. That's what I'm saying, guys. I mean, if you can avoid doing all this um, and, and operate legally, avoid it. So there is everything, guys, that I can find based on um, whether you require to have a U.S. DOT number or a state DOT number. Again, find out yourself. Don't go by just what somebody on YouTube is telling you um, because if that was the case, you guys, again, are opening yourself up for a huge, huge um, disappointment or, you know, huge uh, Pandora's box when you actually get audited and you, you don't follow every last, every last dot. You know, you don't cross your T's and dot your I's for everything that you do with your U.S. DOT number. Um, if your state requires it, then you have to do it. And I would highly suggest finding somebody to do it for you or finding somebody to manage it for you because it's not as simple as some of these guys make it out to be. Um, it's not as simple as you or I even thought. When I first thought, started, I thought, well, you know, it can't be that hard. It is difficult. You know what I'm saying? This, let me show you. This alone is just some of the folders that we have, okay, for my DOT program, Okay. And this is this is made by a third party. This is made by my third my, my DOT guy. Okay, let me just show you how how let's go back over here. Give me one second, guys. Okay. This is made by a third party um, my third party uh, DOT compliance officer who comes in and does all my stuff. But just I mean, this is the kind of stuff you gotta deal with. I mean, you've got to go through all your paper, you gotta have proof of your DOT guys, who's under what programs. How many, you know, how many tests they've done, whether they've done um, pre-employment, post-employment, random drug testing. I mean, it's not that easy. Your certificate of participation into the random drug test programs. Um, it's just a lot of stuff that you don't want to deal with unless you absolutely have to. So keep that in mind, guys. That, again, it's just a lot of, a lot of work that's involved. Um, again, you want to do this? Go ahead. Go ahead and apply for it. Uh, but if you don't need it, you're spending a lot of time, wasting a lot of time. Wait till you get audited. Um, this is more documents that we have for our company that we actually have on file. Um, all of our DOT inspections, our um, random auditing programs, uh, you know, our results from our last random audits, our insurance, our list of vehicles. You got to keep you got to keep track of list of vehicles. You got to keep track of. There has to be a folder. With each specific vehicle, you have to have on there the date you purchased it. You got to have on there right in the front. You got to have on it the tire size. There's so many rules, so many rules that it's not even funny. Um, again, I, I, look, I'm doing this for free, guys. I'm not trying to make any money. I'm not trying to sell you a book. I'm not trying to sell you a program. Um, I'm just telling you as it is. Um, you know, I'm here to help as much as I possibly can. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I apologize, but I honestly don't think so. I will be doing a video this week again, uh, part three of to DOT or not to DOT. Um, and I will have here my compliance officer, hopefully if he's willing to go on camera for me, um, who will you know possibly even do a live video uh, for you guys. But that being said, I hope you guys um, have learned something. Um, also, you know, if you haven't learned anything, just make sure you're doing your own homework. Um, don't go by what I say or anybody else on YouTube has to say, or your buddy on down the street that owns a, a, a dump trailer that he's never been pulled over. He may not have any, and that's fine. I may not have yet, and that's fine. But, um, what I do know is DOT is nothing to, uh, play around with. It's nothing to just, Hey, go pay $25 and that's all you got to do. And you put a sticker on your car. 
I mean, it, it goes down to the to the nitty gritty as far as the size of the sticker on your vehicle that you put DOT, the color. It has to be a contrasting color. So that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Do your homework. I hope this video has been um, helpful for you. Um, if you're here in Texas, I it is my understanding you do not need a USD OT, US DOT number. Do you need commercial insurance? Absolutely. Yes, I agree 100% with that. Do not operate this company or your company or do not operate a dump trailer and decide to rent it out on your own without commercial insurance. And now I'm talking about commercial vehicle insurance and I'm talking about like a general liability insurance. General liability is very inexpensive for me comparative to any other company that I've opened up or ran. Uh, $2,400 a year is what I pay for a, a, um, a $1 million policy. Um, should I do two million? Possibly, and I'll probably get quoted in the next few months and see uh, what two million. I'm sure it won't cost me that much more. Twenty-four hundred dollars, and that also includes. Um, I found out finally the other day that includes um, theft uh, and uh, um, what is it? Theft and damage to my trailers. I asked them to take that off because I wasn't going to pay two. If it was a big amount, I didn't want to pay twenty-four hundred dollars for an eight thousand dollar trailer or seven thousand dollar trailer per year. So when I asked them to take off the theft um, from the policy, it dropped it down to like two thousand a month. So for four hundred dollars a month, I'm paying an extra four hundred dollars a month to cover my two trailers, two dump trailers, uh, with a thousand dollar with a thousand dollar deductible. I figured I might as well do that. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, do your own homework. Double check. Um, you know. Get with a compliance officer. Get with a DOT officer if you need to. Uh, but here in Texas, uh, it is my understanding 100%. If you operate under 26,000 pounds, you do not need a US DOT number if you stay in state. And you do not need a text dot number. Um, cross state lines, absolutely. Hazardous materials, absolutely. 15 or more passengers, absolutely. 26,001 pounds or more, absolutely. Otherwise, not needed. See you guys on the next one.